Rabbi Gross. Are we live? We are live. Live. As live, live can be. It is five. We are live. We are not jive. Uh, <laughs> although we may strive, we are not contrived. We're stuck in our hive. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're stuck, period. I don't know if you uh, were live, but you're stuck. Frozen in time. You're frozen in time. Oh, there you go. You're back. Am I back? Oh, were you frozen? I was, you were frozen. Was I frozen? You were frozen too. I was the original frozen. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's nice to see you today. We haven't uh, we haven't been live together in this in this setting since last week, where we uh, we dropped the challenge, the challenge of the we century, did. I think. Um, well, the the challenge, weekend. the challenge, the great Omer beard. Remind us why we don't shave our beards during the Omer. Those forty nine days were considered a minor period of mourning with uh, uh -huh. very little reprieve during those 49 so in the in, in morning people don't groom yeah. so well, i'll tell groom. you who you know who's not getting or oh that's pretty good that's pretty good it's very yeah. great i'll see i'll see your close up and i'll raise you a closer up <laughs> is that a piece of uh, lunch yeah that's uh, that's lunch <laughs> that's lunch it looks like um, a piece of lunch in there you know who's getting no reprieve from our Omer beard challenge is uh, Rabbi Aaron Mason, my wife. No reprieve oh. whatsoever. Um, yeah. So the challenge is still on. The winner, <laughs> the winner, winner. Yeah, receives receives the yes. cooking of the I not did. winner. Because no one's a loser yeah. at HCR. No one's a loser. No Everyone's one's a, loser. a winner. Everyone's a winner. <laughs> what happens if it's a tie? Uh, if it's a tie, cook for each other. Yeah, then we, we have to cook for just... each other. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll I'll heat up some bread. <laughs> uh, you Sounds should know delicious. that um, Carol Wilson is watching and says hello. We love you, Miss hey, Carol. Carol. We miss yes. you. Um, we got some other folks with us. It looks like Leslie. Fox is here and Hillary's here and Renee is here. It's so good to see everyone. Uh, we could, you know what? I'm just going to put it out on the table. Let's do a preliminary vote. Who is winning the okay. great HCRJ Omer beard growing challenge? If let's you see, think, let's see, could, yeah. let's see what people put it say. In the comments. Yeah. In the comments. Yeah. Put it in the comments. Take so, look. so Rabbi go. Gross, um, I, I'm, I'm glad you're here. We're, we're in the second. Oh, you're really, it's not. It's I, just wanted, not. I wanted them to take it, take it in a little bit. And by the way, you mentioned Hillary. Hillary and her family will be hosting the uh, welcoming Shabbat in their oh. home on Facebook Live on Friday. Uh, We're very excited that. about that. That's I think that great. is at six o'clock on Friday, welcoming Shabbat together. Very nice. Thank you for doing that, Hillary and family. Um, so I think that. Uh, we're not going to take a, a light tone for the next few minutes. I think we'll get back to it, but um, we should acknowledge something that Jews across the world um, took note of and observed yesterday, which is Yom HaShoah, the day of Holocaust remembrance. And I'm going to turn it over to you. Uh, you have some, some sharing you'd like to do on that subject. Yes. And it uh, actually fell on, uh, so we, we talked a little bit about this counting period between Passover and Shavuot, these seven weeks. And it is customary to kind of assign a, each week to a, a theme that's part of uh, the mystical tree of life. This week's theme is givura, or strength, or heroism. And um, before I talk about the Holocaust observance during this week, I'm going to just mention a couple of ideas that are connected to strength and heroism. Let us count our blessings before we reflect on the pains of our past. Is that, so, where, the, is that where the word gibor comes from? Yes, gibor is a hero. 
and uh, givura is strength or heroic. And so I thought that we just pause and, and, and reflect or, or recognize the heroes of today. Certainly we have many who are out there on the front lines of this COVID virus uh, protecting us, our doctors, our nurses, our first responders, uh, those who are continuing to bring us things that we need like food and uh, supplies. Those people are not stopping their work. Uh, our police officers, our firemen, these people are out there. And so before we kind of look back at uh, some of the heroic measures that may have been woven into uh, a very dark period in our, our history, um, I thought we'd just kind of take a moment and recognize heroes. So in addition, I think we asked people to kind of vote on the beard, which is kind of fun, but I thought we would start and we'll kind of look back. If you saw a heroic measure that you saw as a blessing this past week, uh, or something has been going on during the course of our uh, quarantine, go ahead and put those in the comments. Maybe it was someone did something special for your family. Maybe it was somebody in your family that did something special for the world. Um, put those in there and, and Mike and I will uh, look at those in just a little bit. But give a raw. This is the week that we recognize in the counting of the Omer, counting our blessings connected to our strength and heroism. So uh, looking, looking forward to seeing what, what blessings have come your way. Now in light of uh, this uh, remembrance of the Holocaust, yesterday was Holocaust Remembrance Day or Yom HaShoah. Um, there are certainly during that very, very dark period in human history, many who were heroes. There were heroes within our community who stood up and resisted uh, the, the Nazis and the atrocities of the time. There were those who were not Jewish. We call them the righteous Gentiles who hid Jews, who uh, sought to help Jews escape, uh, who brought Jews within their uh, circles of protection. Uh, all of those were heroes of our past. And um, in addition to remembering the tragic horrors of our past, Holocaust Remembrance Day also took time to recognize those heroic measures, things that we need to embrace today uh, as um, hatred, violence, prejudice. These are things that are sadly uh, part of every generation of humanity. So as we remember the blessings of heroism and uh, strength that we're experiencing today with uh, the COVID-19 virus, I suggest that we kind of grab onto, uh, resonate with those heroic measures and figure out as we look at the horrors of our past, ways that we can try never to have these things happen again. Um, I have some, uh, some challenging, some, some kind of uh, uh, interesting perspectives to share in just a moment, but I don't know whether uh, you want to share the, some of those blessings. Did we get any blessings in the comments, Mike? Yeah, we did. Um, Hillary says that uh, Miss Marna, who we love, yes. has made uh, Dylan a birthday party kit that has a cake and hat and presents. She was his birthday hero. And um, I'll just say, like, I have, a, I, I, we've been doing the curbside pickup for our groceries, like a lot of people have. And I get, like, pretty uh, weirdly emotional when I'm at the grocery store and these folks who, you know, didn't sign up to be heroes, didn't sign up to be, like, the... Uh, the lifeline for lots and lots of people in order to get the like nutrition and sustenance that they need. It, it just makes me very, uh, um, I don't exactly know what the word is, but maybe appreciative, appreciative, or, or conscious, appreciative, conscious, uh, not wanting to take any, anything or any person for granted 
at this point, you know, and it's yeah. very, it's very easy to let the mind go in, uh, in different directions in terms of what can and can't happen during this time. And I think that we're really, really fortunate uh, in our Houston community, especially to have first responders who are still responding to have policemen, you know, keeping the law and keeping uh, order um, grocery store folks who are getting us the best produce we can get because we yeah. need it. Um, Marilyn fireman says she's been trying to, uh, to make masks with extra yarmulkes and that's pretty heroic. Not an easy. Yes, thing. absolutely. In fact, I don't know uh, if everybody has heard, but it's going to be the law of Houston. Yeah. Uh, starting, is it tomorrow? I don't, I don't know. I, I think, I think it, it starts was announced Monday. Today. Monday. Starts Monday. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Marilyn, if you have a good uh, design for the yarmulke uh, face mask, uh, send it our way. We're actually thinking about uh, making some competitions out there of uh, mask making. We're certainly going to need a lot of them. And uh, we haven't figured out the details of it yet, but uh, stay tuned. We're going to try to generate a whole culture at HCRJ about making masks, wearing masks, sharing masks. People have made me, I'll say thank you to folks who've sent me masks. And uh, some of them are actually very, very nice. Maybe we'll have a mask fashion show in a couple of weeks. What do you think about that, Mike? <laughs> I think that I think that, that is a one of a kind top notch <laughs> idea. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Anyway, well, thank you for sharing your blessings of heroic measures on this week uh, dedicated to counting our blessings of the heroes in our lives. Uh, going back to uh, just this theme of Holocaust remembrance and some of the challenges that we are going to be facing in the years to come. Um, you know, we are really at the end of uh, end of the line in some ways with survivors. Uh, the oldest survivors are over 100 years old. Uh, so the first generation uh, of, of people who witnessed the Holocaust are almost gone, leaving the, the process of memory to places like the Holocaust Museum or our practices within the Jewish community or in, in, in the country as a whole to never forget. The challenge with that is that people who are trying to rewrite history have a stronger voice as first generation folks pass on. And so one of the challenges in the Jewish community, and I, I, I believe the world, is how do we preserve these memories and the messages that come from this period. Um, one of the ideas that I find intriguing is that we have been able to preserve the memory of our exodus from Egypt for thousands of years, making it something that is alive and something we connect to and learn from and something that motivates us to change the world every year through our Seder. And there's been talk in recent years in uh, the broader Jewish community and in, in the rabbinic circles of trying to create something that is as powerful as the Seder. Certainly, like share a meal around some kind of topic can uh, help, uh, help this uh, process. So planting a seed for those of you who are creative uh, in the years to come, we'll be looking for ways to uh, honor our past, remember the Holocaust in new and creative ways. Very nice. Yeah, it, it's, uh, and we're lucky when we are able to be more free in our coming and our going to have a resource in our community like the Houston Museum of the Holocaust that we can go to and um, be supportive of, et cetera. Well, which, by the way, I actually want to add one more thing. It is so critical to have museums like this because according to the last Pew report, you know, the, the giant study that goes out uh, every few years, more than 50% of Americans polled, more than 
50% did not know that 6 million Jews died in the Holocaust. That is frightening. Uh, and so we really have a lot of work to do to uh, really uh, help people learn more about our past and, and how not to have this happen again. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing your wisdom with us as always. <laughs> um, we'll shift gears in a not so subtle way to say that we do have one vote. Um, oh. The great HCRJ Omer Beardoff. Only one? Only one, which is, you know, if you're watching and you want to vote on who's got the better Omer beard going with the caveat and understanding that I had a l small yeah. head start. Small, small head start. Head you start. already had a beard. <laughs> yeah. We we would love to hear who you think's got the uh, who's got the advantage, and we have one vote, and it's from Leslie Fox, and she says it's it's you, huh? No, she, she likes my beard. She says she's got to go with the higher to the heavens, and that was. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I love Leslie. <laughs> yeah, so so let's uh, let's make sure that folks know about all of our. Uh, online offerings, our virtual offerings. Of course, you can always yeah. go to hcrj.org to uh, to see all of our scheduling. And Justin does an amazing job of keeping it up to date. And he's, uh, I mean, we got to give him a shout out because he's shout out to, yes. all of the ideas that we are putting out there. Um, Rabbi Gross, tell us a little bit about your your coffee house conversations that, that are- Oh, yes. So this is a new uh, program that you have coffee in the morning. Uh, Usually it's on Tuesday mornings, but because we, we actually had a conflict this coming Tuesday, so it will be on Thursday, but it'll be a weekly coffee at 10 o'clock. That's really a, a time to check in. So if you're feeling low, you're feeling uh, really good, whatever, you're just enjoying a coffee, you want to share it with some HCRJ folks, uh, we have a, a now an ongoing weekly Zoom call. I'm trying to get some... Uh, Fine coffees, of course, from Caps Coffee. Um, he's uh, um, Avi Caps, who is the coffee, is that a coffee tier, Co a coffee maker? Coffee. Yeah, there's definitely a word for it. I don't know what it is. A coffer. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he's going to be uh, sending me some unique beans that I can uh, kind of dis discuss as well. But honestly, it will we'll have topics of the day, everything from, in, you know, let us meet your pets to um, how to keep celery fresh in your refrigerator. <laughs> Aha, something really practical. Wow, that, yeah. you heard it here first, folks, <laughs> groundbreaking. Uh, we should also say that in addition to Live at Five, we have Shabbat Shiga'on for families every Friday at 11. Uh, live at five most Mondays, but definitely every Wednesday with uh, you and me. That's our time. Yes. That's our time to do our thing. Our time. And um, also, if you are the family of second through fifth graders, we have a very, very special opportunity this Sunday at 10 a.m. Hillel, the magician, is going to do a virtual magic show just for us at HCRJ. Uh, you can contact me, Mike, at hcrj.org to get more information to get yourself all signed up. Rabbi Gross. What makes, it, what makes it even more special. I don't know. Is Nick, well, he's, he's, he's streaming live from uh, Tel Aviv. No. Which will, yeah, from Tel Aviv. And that will connect us for Yom Ha'atzma'ut, which is Israel Independence Day, giving us a connection directly to Israel through Hillel, the magician. Very nice. And he's, he's great. Very nice. Yes, he is great. We did a test run, but we're not going to give you any spoilers no. just to say that it was awesome. No live animals will be used in this performance. <laughs> All right, Rabbi Gross, thank you. Thanks, everyone, for watching and being with us. And we will see you very, very soon. Stay safe, wash your hands, and stay inside. Oh, I forgot to do the, uh, the blessing for washing our hands. I almost forgot. Oh. The Wolfson family would be very upset with me if we didn't do it so i don't know what do you what are you all having for dinner what's for dinner at the uh, at the gross ranch i made a sicilian eggplant relish and we're gonna have sliced fresh tomatoes because i bought way too many <laughs> yeah word on the street you word got on the a street. lot of tomatoes and we'll be having uh, fresh sliced tomatoes with crumbled blue cheese 
Mm, all right. Will you lead us in the mozi after this? Yes. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Kishanu Vemitzvotam Vitzivanu Al Netilad Yadayim Al Netilad Yadayim Wash your hands! Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Hamotzi lechem min ha'aretz. Amen. Amen. Thanks everybody for being with us today.